Hello, thank you for watching my channel today. My name is Sarah and my channel is called Your True Shelf. Today I am recording a video about the um, books or best selling books of 2003, which is a tag which was started by Mel and I will link her channel and the original tag video down in the description box. So this is a tag that I really recently watched Eric from Lonesome Reader do and thought it was really fun. And um, the first question of the tag is, um, choose a year that you want to go back to and why. So when I watched his tag, he chose, um, he's just having his 20 year anniversary with his partner. And so he chose um, the year that they met. And I thought that was a really nice idea because it's not too far back, um, but it's not too recent either. So I decided to do the same thing. So I've been with my husband since 2003. So that is the year that I chose for um, the books that answer the rest of the questions. Um, you basically have a look on Goodreads at the um, top 200 books from the year 2003 um, and then you use that to answer the questions. So the second question, which books published in that year have you read or if none, have you heard of? So I've actually read nine of the books which were in the top 200 in 2003. So the first one was Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, which I'm guessing the whole of Booktube has read. That's the fifth in the Harry Potter series, and I don't need to tell you what it's about because everybody knows what Harry Potter is about. Um, the second one is one of my favourite books of all time, and it is The Time Traveller's Wife by Audrey Niffenegger. So this is another one which probably most people have read, but it follows the stories of a Claire and Henry, and Henry has a condition where he will... Um, to travel back in time and come back to a former place in his life and he'll arrive naked and um, just find himself and back in this place and the people who he are with who he's with don't know if it's like future Henry who's come back or present Henry um, so I remember it getting a little bit confusing at, at points but I think I watched the film first and so I kind of understood what's going on um more easily and um but anyway i absolutely adored the book and i loved um the relationship between claire and henry and um the film has rachel McAdam in and she's one of my favorite actresses so that was really nice as well so yeah all in all love that book and the next one was the curious incident of the dog in the night time by mark Haddon, which i read a couple of years ago a few years ago um, I can't remember loads about the plot, so it's a YA or middle grade book, and I there's a dog which is murdered, and there's a boy who is um on the autistic spectrum, and he has to try. He's trying to solve what happened, and that is all I can remember. I remember like there's loads of hype about the book, and I enjoyed it, but I didn't love it. I didn't think it was amazing. Um, so I can't remember masses about that one. Next was. Five People You Meet in Heaven by Mitch Album. So I DNF'd this one. Um, I had it on audiobook and I couldn't stand the narrator's voice. I can't remember if it's him that reads it or another narrator, but I just found the voice really irritating and it just took away from the actual book for me. So since then, I've read um, Tuesdays with Maury by Mitch Album and absolutely loved that book. And so I'd like to go back to this one, but to actually read it rather than listen to it and I also bought another Mitch album book recently about if you had one more day in your life or something like that um so yeah so I've, I'm still pursuing his stuff next is um P.S. I Love You by Celia Ahern so I remember watching the film of this um before I started a night shift once and I loved the film and then I wanted to go and get the book and I thought the book was okay I didn't think it didn't blow me away um I think I enjoyed the film more um but that's about basically about um, a husband and wife and the husband dies and before he dies he writes a lot of letters to her to be delivered at various points um, over the next year after he's died and he finishes each letter with P.S. I love you. Um, so it's almost like he's writing to her from beyond the grave. Um, so it's a really nice premise and um, story but the book didn't blow me away. Um, next one it was We Need to Talk About Kevin by Lionel Shriver. So this is a book about um, a woman who has a son called Kevin and Kevin does things um, which are... Right, so the things get more and more horrific as the book goes on but at the beginning it's kind of behavioural issues and how it's written is quite clever because the mum sees it all as a personal 
from him against her, even when he's a baby. And then it gets worse. And so we never we don't know at the beginning whether it's the mum who kind of just misinterpreting things. Like for instance, she'll say she'll change his nappy and then just after she's changed his nappy he'll go to the toilet straight away in the clean nappy as if he was doing it on purpose to make her start again. Well babies do that all the time, but the mum sees that as like him trying to be spiteful towards her. And so it then kind of gets bigger and bigger things and so we have to decide and then it becomes more obvious. Um Hey sweetheart. So um I'm being ordered downstairs now. One minute. So that would be an interesting book to read again now that I've had children, I think. Um, so it was quite um, intense, but good. And the next one was Shutter Island, which I can't remember who it's by. I want to say Dennis somebody. Um, I remember again, we'll watch the film with Leonardo DiCaprio. It's a kind of a creepy thriller set in a prison. And I remember that the book was better than the film, actually, I think. Um, I really enjoyed the book. Um, I can't remember massively what it's about I remember it's got a good twist in it but I can't remember much else um next is one of the my favorite books of all time again so this is a good um good year for me um The Kite Runner by Carla Tussaini so this follows the um relationship of two boys who are best friends one is the son of a servant to the other boy's father so there's like one father and son who are there which ones and then one father and son who are the servants and the boys are best friends and then there's an act of betrayal between the boys and it talks about how that irrevocably changes both of their lives and it's a beautiful story of love and friendship and of times of good times and bad in Afghanistan and Pakistan and yeah I loved it so much and I'd highly recommend Carla Tussaini's work I really really love it and then finally, the last one I read was Dissolution by C.J. Sampson, which is the first in the Shard Lake series. And one of my best friends loves this book and or loves this series. And so she lent me the first one. I can't say that I loved it as much as her, so I didn't carry on with reading the series. It's set in about, I think, the 1500s. And it, this one's about monasteries. And they're kind of like a sort of a crime and mysteries um, element to them. Although the last one which I haven't read any of the others the last one is set in Norwich which could be quite interesting because it's about um historical um you know based in where I live which would be which would be cool so um right so that's all of the ones I read the third question is are there any that sound interesting and would you read them now so there was some that I'd heard of and some that I hadn't so um if I start with one that I'd never heard of and I liked the title and the cover so I clicked on it to have a look what it's about and it's called The Orange Girl by Justine Garda. I think it's in translation. And um, this is about a boy whose dad dies when he's four. And then his grandmother finds um, a load of paper sewn into one of the cushions in the sofa. And the papers are a story um, called The Orange Girl and a letter to... Um, to the little boy saying um, from his dad saying can you help me solve this mystery and it's about a day when he bumped into a girl on a train and she was carrying oranges and she dropped them and then she just left them everywhere that's how it starts and um, it sounded really intriguing it's only 150 pages but it sounded really lovely and I really liked the sound of that so I actually am going to check that one out um, the next one is um, The Wife by Meg Wallitzer so um i watched the film version of this in the cinema recently meg wallace is somebody who i've wanted to read for ages her books sound really interesting and i've never actually picked any of them up so that one would definitely be on my list and uh, another one the lady and the unicorn by tracy chevalier that's one i've actually got on my tbr that i haven't read yet um i think that one from what i remember is set in uh the sort of 1600s ish and it's about a tapestry um just one minute um the next one is another one i've got on my tbr the known world by edward p jones this is about a, a gentleman who is liberated from slavery and he then um starts training um under a white i believe white lawyer and he kind of um elevates in his career and the difficulties that he faces as a black man that's been on my tbr for a while 
Um, next is Oryx and Crake, which is the first in the Mad Adam trilogy by Margaret Atwood. So I actually bought either the second or the third one in this trilogy without realising it was part of the trilogy. So I'd like to read the first one. I've heard really good things. Uh, next is Purple Hibiscus by Chimamanda and Ngozi Adichie. So I have read Americana and really enjoyed that. And I have got... Which one have I got? Um, Half of Your Yellow Sun on my TBR, which I haven't read yet. And I would like to read Purple Hibiscus as well. Next one is one I've got on my wish list, which is Reading Lolita in Tehran by Azar Natisi. That one really, um, I find that um, really um, interesting. Um, I like learning about um, countries in the Middle East and about women in the Middle East and that one sounded really fascinating because it's about books as well. And then finally, a non-fiction called Stiff by Mary Roach. Mary Roach writes about kind of um, taboo or grim subjects um, and interesting facts about them. And this one is about um, cadavers. So I just thought I'd find that quite interesting, seeing as I have my line of work. Question number four is um, most obscure sounding. So there were two. The first one was called The Earth, My Butt and Other Big Round Things by Carolyn Mockler. So um, I had to look what that was about. Um, the title, I'm not sure. Um, the, uh, the premise actually sounds good. It's um, a fiction book about a teen who is um, a plus size and it's about her journey to body confidence. So it actually does sound really good and something that I'd like to read. Have an absolutely loved Big Bones by Laura Dockwell earlier this year. Um, but yeah, the title did make me chuckle. And then the second one was called Angry Housewives Eating Bonbons by Laura Landrick. Um, yeah, I had to look what that was about. And it's about some, um, it might be okay. I mean, it's about some housewives in America who like um, sort of having a chat and eating sweets and desserts and stuff while they do so, putting the world to rights. Um, and then they start a book group, which they call Angry Housewives Eating Bonbons. Just like random title. Um, and then the last question was The Strangest Cover. The, the covers weren't, weren't too bad because I think it's like when you have older books more that you get really weird covers. But the strangest cover I'll put a picture up called, was called Lord John and the Private Matter by Diana Gabald Gabaldon. That's a really bad title and the cover looks really rubbish. So that was my um, my tag of this, um, this um, year in books uh, tag. Um, so thank you for watching, let me know if you've read any of those books, let me know if any of them are of interest to you, if there's any you'd recommend from 2003, I hope you're having a lovely week and I'll speak to you soon, bye!